One, two. It's green? No, it's not green. There you go. Alhamdulillah, uh, Assalamu alaikum Rasulullah. Very happy to see you. I'm very sad to leave you. Because I have to leave, because we're all going to leave. You live with me, as we agreed yesterday. Yeah. I can invite you for a cup of tea in 20, 50 years, Are but you pay for it. No, you know the problem. She will pay for it. <laughs> anyway, it is a meeting which is, since I came to South Africa uh, last week, I've been inspired and motivated and elevated by the work that I have been watching or seeing from Annardale when I went there to see Osizwini Community Center to another feeding center by Sister Rukhshana yesterday. I was feeding about 400 people every day with your support. If the Waqf is not helping her, please help her. If Awqaf is not helping her, it's you. I'm talking to you. And if you are not helping her, please help her. As well as help Anardel, uh, not Anardel, Auschwitz uh, Wini Community Center, run by very nice ladies. So we came here to learn from you. And we did. We took the knowledge from you. You didn't realize how much knowledgeable you are um, and how much experience you have. But the only problem or the difference between you and somebody else is the confidence. The confidence. Or not confident enough to start, stand, and speak publicly in the, on the international arena. You have the skills, you have the knowledge, you have the experience, but you don't trust yourself. Don't, don't, don't let anyone to put you down, to let you down. You have everything, all the skills. What we need, we need some polishing. What I've been doing over yesterday and today is something some of them might have been doing it. But we need to do more of it. And what we need to do, and more of it, is to be together. As mentioned yesterday, the information you have in your organization is not yours. The money in your organization is not yours. Okay? The knowledge in your organization is not yours. It is the community. If the salary paid by the organization to you is from the poor people, from the orphan, from the widows, because the donors give the money for the orphans, so you have to employ people. This is, we need to focus, to focus on our mission, to focus on our purpose, to focus why we are having such organizations. Are we having the organization just for the sake of creating an organization for our family or for our clan or for our group or for our jama'ah or to serve the community? I was listening to a very, very shocking story yesterday about a young girl who is 16 and she has got two children. One from the father and one from the uncle. And she's a Muslim. What's your mosque doing for it? What is your mosque doing for this? Nothing. Don't come and talk to me about Islam. Where the community does not know what's happening in the neighborhood. This daughter is mine. The age of 16 insist is happening at home. And we're just building buildings. You know what? Let me to be proselytizing you, Sister Agnes, because I love you. Oh, I, love you I love you three and four and five. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Prophet Sallallahu said, he was sitting next to the Kaaba, in the shade of Kaaba, which is a holy place in Mecca. And they said, the secrecy of the Muslims is more important than the secrecy of Kaaba. And never, ever mistrust him or her. If Kaaba is destroyed, Kaaba is a stone. Can be rebuilt again. Many times have been destroyed. But we worship the stones. The stones are more important than the human being. And this is where, this is where we have got conflicting ideology at the back of our mind. 
Could I have been born in South Africa? I could have had this girl to be my daughter. But only this one. Most of the HIV AIDS contracted or getting from the husband to the wife in the so-called Muslim family. And this is what I have heard. 12 years ago, we had the HIV AIDS conference here. You, you were attending. More than 200 people were there. And they wanted to build a new organization called HIV AIDS. You see, religion is about behavior. Whether you are Christian or a Muslim or whatever you call them yourself. It's about how can you deal with people. Even in our religion, 80% is mu'amalat and 10 to 20% is uh, what you call it, a ritual of the religion itself. How to deal with people. Our manner, our contribution, our submission to the community and so on, so on, so on, so on. So, on. so with this one story that I have heard in one hour or in half an hour with Joe. Come on, Joe. Joe, you are not a photographer. You are a leader. And let me to rise by standing next to you. Come to my right. Tell us another story. The tell us, way. don't tell me. Uh, yeah. okay. No, the microphone is with me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other microphone? <laughs> bring it, bring it. Another story. Because we need people to realize the depth of the problem of the people in South Africa. It's about talk show. Talk show is over. Over, bayan and speeches are over, khutbah is over. We go, out, go outside the mosque to face the reality. In the same community that uh, Dr. Ani was referring to, there was a young, a young boy that I met. He was nine years old. His name was Muhammad. And he was nine years old, but he was only probably about two feet tall. And this young boy told us that when we asked him what does he want to be one day, he said he wants to be an imam because imams are respected. But this young boy, in order to tell us one sentence or five words, he had to take about three breaths. And when we asked about his condition, we found out that when he was born, his mother had abandoned him on a field. And he was found by a lady that was walking across this field stuffed inside a guava juice bottle. She was walking across the field and heard the screams of a, an infant child. And she was looking in between the tall grass and she found this guava juice bottle with a fetus, small little baby stuffed inside. And then she took the baby to the hospital and managed to save the baby's life. But he, he didn't have a high life expectancy. But... Uh, this is the reality that Dr. Andy is speaking about. And, were, and this was just in one location, a snapshot of one location within South Africa. And you, can't, you wouldn't consider to, this to be even the poorest community in South Africa. Thank you. So Maulana, the father has a girl, a baby, a baby girl from his daughter. What is the mosque doing for them? The uncle who attacked the girl with her niece, what is the mosque is doing, with, doing with them? Bayan is not enough. Khutbah is not enough. Building, building stones is not enough. Building lives of the people is what we need to convert the belief that we have into an action to save the community. Whether we are Muslims or non-Muslims. Should share the common value of humanity for humanity. Common value for humanity of humanity for humanity. These two shocking stories is for each and every one of us here to take home and to feel the agony of this 16-year-old girl with two children from her father and from her uncle. From her father and uncle. And this is not the only, it's not the only story that we have. It's one of the stories that we have heard when maybe thousands and thousands and thousands of stories that we have. What our deen is doing for us. What our community, our, our teachers are doing for us. Nothing. Convert your belief into action to save the community. 
That's why we should look at why we are here for. Are we here for to getting some money from Islamic leaf? They can go to hell with Islamic leaf. I can say this for myself. Are we here to have a nice meal, a nice meeting? I can't go to hell if I come for this. I am here to keep focusing on the purpose of my organization and how can I take it forward. As we mentioned yesterday, we started with no money. Even I was talking this morning with, with Wazir Awad about how did we start with World Humanitarian Summit to do 39 consultations in 35, 36 countries and six months or a year before we were closing the organization down because we had no fund. Never put yourself down because you have no money. Never ever. The money comes if your heart is clean. My heart is clean. If my intention is clean. And if I'm focusing on serving the community, a community to save and serve the community. It's unwell, God will come and help you. Amen. See, God will come and help you when he looks at the heart. Does not look, Allah does not, remember Mawlana, the hadith, in Allah Allah does not look at your face, whether you're black or white or tall or short or rich or poor, no. No way. The greatest companion of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam black. From, so from Ethiopia. One of the greatest and was an icon for humanity. For Muslim Bilal, Hazrat Bilal radiallahu anhu. He was ahead of most of the Arabs. He was ahead of most of the Arabs. And, Bilal, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made him one of, his, one of his family members. And he was a slave before he became to Islam. The Allah never looks at the dress, at the color of the hair, at the length of the beard. Look at your heart. Is it clean or not? If it's clean, fine. If not, clean it. Then looks at our action. Action to save community. That's why the message of all the prophets never was about themselves. It's always about community. It's always about community. It's always about humanity. It's always about future dream that each and every one of them will be saving humanity. Whether well, it's Abraham or Jesus or Jacob or Muhammad or John or Joseph or uh, what else? Many. Noah. Noah. Everyone. Everyone. It's not about himself. It's about the community. Here's the big ask before we leave. When I go back to my bedroom tonight, am I going to remember the story of this young girl who has been raped twice by a father and by an uncle? Or this young boy who has been put in this bottle? Because his mother, of course, gets him from unlawful sexual marriage, a sexual relationship, and more. High state of HIV AIDS is in South Africa. What are we doing for it? This is a problem with us. Do we believe in what we are doing, that we are doing it, or we are doing it because it's a, it's a job? This is the ask. This is the ask that we need to ask us, whether actually if you are from this background or this background. In humanitarian work, don't bring your background to me. I have no time for your background. I have all the time for the community work. Never, ever. If you want to follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ and Jesus and others, Prophet ﷺ, look at the community of Jesus, the community of Muhammad ﷺ and the others. That's why they came to save humanity. No matter how much you can do, how little you can do, in Allah, Allah does not want you to do something which you cannot do. You are unable to do. Do whatever you can. Even by making a prayer at home for those people. This is what you can do. Even by cleaning in front of your house. This is what you can do. Allah is finished. And Allah does not compel you to do something that you cannot do. 
Do as little as you can, but do it consistently. You know, all what Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad was saying yesterday and today, is consistency in planning and organizing. Processes he was talking about is planning. It's not emotional reaction. It's not jumping and bumping. No. We're going to save a village. How? Take steps. Take six months or one year or two years. Takes partnership, cooperation, collaboration. So we can save it. But jumping and making some speeches and then after that, what? Everybody goes home? You go home to your wife. I go home because there's no home. As a child, I go to school, there's no school. As a child, I go to wear clothes, but there's no clothes. There's no shoes. There's no food. There's no place to play. After you gave me the speech, you go home to your wife and your family. That's where I'm going to go to. This is our problem. Put our heart where our action is. If we want to act properly and if we want to save humanity. No discrimination between male and female. Your statement yesterday, mainstream is mainstream, is, is very well swallowed by myself. That's why it's giving me a diarrhea now. <laughs> and stomach ache. <laughs> It's very serious. You know what? Because the greatest woman on, his, on, on humanity was the backbone of our prophet. And he did not mention her only. He, may, he mentioned Mary, the virgin, peace be upon her, one of the greatest four women on humanity, and the wife of Pharaoh, which is the foster mother of, of Moses, alayhi salam. Which should be, you know what happened to her? To the wife of Pharaoh? When he knew that she believed in Moses' message, you know what he done? Either you give up your religion, or I will throw all your children in the boiling oil. Boiling oil in front of a believing woman standing up to now as an icon for humanity. He said, no, I'm not going to give up. One child after the other. One child after the, in front of her. You know, before he threw her in the boiling oil, as they were doing this, the disciples of, of, of Jesus, peace be upon him, to throw them to the lions, she told them, please, I have a request. He said, what? Say whatever you want. He thought that she would be said, save me. He said, when you kill me, put my bones with the bones of my children. the same grave. This is the strength of the woman who stood for humanity. And when our Prophet entered heaven in Isra and Mi'raj, it smelled a very beautiful smell coming from somewhere. And the angel Jibreel he was asking him, Prophet was asking him, what is this smell? She's the smell of, uh, what's her name, uh, the wife? Asia. The smell of Asia and her children in their graveyard. This is the role of woman in our religion. This is my wife. The woman is my wife, is my daughter, is my mother, is my auntie, is my teacher, is my daughter, is my, is, is my children. That's it. Coming back to the story of the 16-year-old who had the two children. Put her story in your mind and think about it. If this is my daughter or my niece, what could I have done? I leave you, inshallah, but I'm not going to leave you because I love you. Okay? Because our love to me and you will be a very attractive power to bring me back here. The more you love me, the more you bring me back here. The more I love you, the more I run away from you. <laughs> May Allah bless you, inshallah. And I, Muhammad is a great, come on, great man. Yo, yo, the man with the money. Come on, come on. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, Sulaiman. No, no, come on, come on. Sulaiman with the money. You have to squeeze his pocket. His sweat is gold. <laughs> and the dust on his hair is silver. <laughs> and his, as, uh, his nails are actually are, are uranium, uranium or whatever you call it. <laughs> and diamond, diamond. May Allah bless you, inshallah.
And, but also, I also want to make a confession. Confession? I'm not, I'm yeah. not part of Aukaf, Dr. Ali. Huh? Doesn't matter. You talk about Aukaf. I work for Aukaf on a, you promote on a joint one. project. No, 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 no. You promote the cause. You don't have to be employed by anybody else. Because you have a mission, you have a belief, you have a heart, you promote the cause. What from you? To promote the cause. Because you are a messenger of the messengers of God. Trying to save humanity by promoting the message of endowment. You got it? Got it. I like Give me the check. I like Give me the check. <laughs> it's in the post. Yeah. Which post? We, we have Wi-Fi now. We have email, isn't it? Yes, it is.